Hi folks, it's Carl Freund again with Cambrian AI and have another startup to introduce you to today. This one particularly caught my attention because of their focus on transformers and a few other things they're doing with the technology. Uh, the company is D-Matrix and today I'd like to welcome Sudeep Boha, the uh, founder and CTO and Sid Chef, the founder and CEO. Welcome gentlemen. Thank, Thank you. you. Great. So, um, as I said, I was very interested in your story when I first picked it up. Um, so why don't we just start, Sid, Sid and Sudeep, if you could just talk to us about who is D-Matrix, what are you doing, and, and why are you doing it? Yeah, no, thanks for having us, Carl, and thanks for doing this. Um, so, you know, we started D-Matrix uh, three years ago, uh, back in May of 2019. Um, we actually started ideating the company a year before that. Uh, you know, looking at, uh, you know, what, what would be a really relevant problem for us to go solve with, uh, with the kind of background we have, right? Uh, the one, you know, just, just a little background on the team that will give you an idea about how we got to where we are. Uh, so D-Matrix is really a team of, of great technologists and great uh, engineers who love to solve, you know, really bleeding edge hardware problems, um, you know, and, and uh, essentially package them into solutions which involves you know, putting the software around it and getting it deployed with customers and ramping those products to, to production, right? So the cycle from uh, technology conception of an idea all the way to production deployment uh, requires many, many steps that you know, some, you know, our team has to take along the way. And this, this is the team that has taken those steps you know, multiple times, actually built very valuable businesses in the process of doing that. Um, the last you know, big success that the team had was uh, at Infi, Corporation where they built Infi's uh, data center business. Um, you know, I ran that business for close to eight plus years. Sudeep was CTO for that business. Uh, some of the core team members at Dmatrix come from the same business. Uh, we we built that business from zero essentially to close to you know 200 plus million when we left Infi. That business is now running at half a billion uh, in revenue uh, and is is now part of Marvel. Uh, you know, Marvel bought Infi in a 10 billion dollar deal in 2021. Uh, so it's been a big success and uh, this team has been instrumental in, in, in putting, uh, putting that business together. Um, uh, so, you know, clearly a team with a lot of experience has, you know, shipped over hundred million chips um, uh, over the last, you know, 20 plus years, generated a billion in revenue in the process, right? So, so we, we know what it takes uh, to take uh, an idea and, and get, it, get it into production and build a valuable business around it. Uh, now, when we started ideating D-Matrix, um, you know, we had been working with some of the biggest data center customers in the world. Um, we, we had been working with the likes of, you know, Facebooks and Google and uh, the Amazons and the Microsofts of the world. Um, and uh, they were essentially using our interconnect solutions that we were building at Infi to connect a lot of their AI networking clusters, right? So it was, you know, uh, they were using some very high bandwidth pipes for distributed AI training. Uh, at the time. And uh, in many ways, we had a front row seat to the type of problems that some of these customers were facing. And what was becoming uh, quite clear to us was, uh, you know, AI compute is really training and inference and training was uh, something that seemed to have a lot of R&D dollars chasing it at the time. Um, inference, on the other hand, was a problem that was expected to become much, much larger over, over the course of time but it seemed like it was very fragmented, right? Uh, there was there was companies building, you know, stuff for the consumer edge and embedded edge and autonomous edge and data centers. And uh, we we looked at that market and said, you know, we didn't see anyone that was really solving what would it take to build an extremely efficient computing platform uh, to do inference in the data center, right? And uh, we didn't wanted to we didn't want to go out and build something that was this and you know many other things like you know we are training and inference or we are HPC and inference or we are graphics and inference. And we are, you know, we, we wanted to build something that was dedicated for inference. And what would it take to build a computing platform if you were to build a dedicated inference computing platform? What kind of decisions would you make uh, if you had no other baggage to carry with you? And that is how we started looking at the problem. And the other advantage uh, we had was we came at it from a very different angle. We are essentially guys who, uh, come with a background in DSPs, uh, IO interconnects, memory interconnects, fault tolerant systems. And, um, you know, we looked at the problem very, very differently. Uh, we didn't look at it from the lens of a traditional computer architect. 
but really, you know, how, how do we solve the inferencing problem for efficiency um, if we were to use some of these other techniques? And that is how we honed in on uh, in-memory compute. And uh, we started looking at what, uh, what work had been done in the industry so far on in-memory computing. And what we saw was most of uh, the techniques that were being used were with some form of non-volatile memory, you know, whether it's flash or VRAM or MRAM, uh, didn't seem like anybody was taking digital programmable memories and trying to do in-memory computing with them. Though there was, you know, published, published research in various conferences, but really nobody, you know, had found a way to commercialize that uh, or was working on solving that problem. Um, so we, we kind of went down the path of, of uh, building a, a computing platform with those techniques targeted for the data center market. And that is the journey that we went on. And that is how Dmatrix essentially got started. And um, and yeah, here we are three years later, we we have uh, built what is uh, the industry's first digital in-memory computing engine. It's an all digital in-memory computing engine and uh, it is very well suited for data center applications. Interesting, so you can avoid the cost and latency of moving data from, from memory uh, to, to the processor registers. Uh, as well as, of course, the energy efficiency of not having to do that data movements. That's really important. Correct. Uh, um, perhaps um, we can uh, ask Sudeep just to quickly describe your first generation product and where you're going next uh, from a product roadmap. And then we can kind of circle back onto the differentiators that uh, you're, you're going to be touting in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. So, um... So yeah, so what we are doing, uh, Carl, is um, trying to accelerate transformers. And transformers have um, something called the self-attention mechanism, where you essentially are doing matrix multiplies followed by uh, two projection matrices and a dense matrix before that. So the typical computations in a transformer layer are matrix multiplies followed by uh, some, some sort of a softmax function, to get the weighted probabilities. So there's a lot of uh, you know, large data movement of the weight matrices involved here. So what we do is we use in-memory compute techniques to store the weight matrix in place. And, and um, we, so we don't have to move that data. And we are able to store as much as 4 million weights before we have to swap those weights out. So we save a lot of power in the data movement. Uh, we also have acceleration for the softmax function. And the softmax function uh, generally becomes a critical path in these transformer networks. So we specifically accelerate uh, you know, that operator. Uh, and finally, there is a lot of compute involved in, 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 in a, a model like GPT-3. Right? It is about five orders of magnitude higher than, in terms of tops, higher than, um, you know, the ResNet type of models, uh, computer vision models. So, um, so what we look at is efficient numerics for that. In particular, we look at a block floating point numerics. Uh, as you might see, the latest trend in the industry is to use FPA training for, for, for uh, transformers. So we have a way to take the mantis of FPA, which is four bits, and, and represent that with the block floating point representation, which allows us to deliver more tops per watt. Uh, we also tap into sparsity, specifically structured sparsity. We support as, a, as much as 75% structured sparsity in our in-memory compute unit. Interesting. So obviously transformers are a big deal these days. I think I read recently that 60% of the papers being published uh, e e uh, academically are all about transformers and how multimodal transformers are the next big thing. But uh, they're huge. They're absolutely huge. How do you how do you deal with that with a smaller, efficient uh, platforms? Just as this design for inference. What are you doing to make it so so efficient? Yeah. So so um, the couple of things we're doing we're doing chiplets, uh, right? So we are able to tile multiple chiplets together, and and we also go into DRAM. Uh, so so we are using DRAMs to store large weights. Uh, and we put as much as eight chiplets on one platform to be able to scale up to a GPT-3 style of model. Wow, interesting. So but do you, do you, 
you don't do the computation into ERAM, right? You assume you, you do that in SRAM? Correct, correct. The computations are done in SRAM. Uh, so we've been looking into DRAM and doing computations in DRAM, uh, but it's at the point now where it's hard to integrate logic and memory together. Uh, so our first generation products use SRAMs to, uh, to implement the digital and memory compute. Excellent. And where are you in the, your, your path towards productization? What, what, what can people expect and when? Yeah, so we are, we are uh, you know, we, in the past three years, we have already taped out uh, two generations of silicon. Our first silicon taped out in, in uh, November, or uh, September of 2020. Um, and we demonstrated that silicon in 2021. We recently taped out our Gen 2 silicon, which we'll show off in the second half of this year. Um, and all these were steps to building the final product. So we yeah. have essentially proven out all the you know, critical IP, uh, whether it's the digital in-memory computing IP. Uh, we talked about chiplets and you know, we have an interconnect, uh, a very high bandwidth, energy efficient uh, interconnect that runs on organic substrates. So it's extremely cost efficient also. Um, we have proven that interconnect out with, with the silicon that we have built. So all the critical building blocks that would go into the final product have already been built out uh, between the two revisions of silicon that we have done so far. Um, and the team is now working on putting the final product together, uh, which will be available in the second half of 2023 with a projected ramp uh, at target customers in 2024. Interesting. So you're using each of those initial tape out, taped out products to uh, build the chiplets, right? And then you're con now connecting those chiplets onto a NOC. Right, 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 exactly. So these these are smaller chiplets. And uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to take those smaller chiplets and scale them up into a bigger uh, chiplet. Yeah, yeah. And um, and that that would eventually be the final product that would get deployed. Interesting, interesting. So what's your go-to-market vision, Sid? Where, where, where are you going to sell? You also, obviously, you have a lot of competitors. Uh, none, however, are taking your approach. So you have clearly an opportunity for differentiation, but you're also selling into companies that uh, already have large infrastructure, but they're just now kind of getting serious about their inference infrastructure. Correct. No, uh, what's your, what's your, how are you going to, how are you going to cr crack that nut? Yeah. Yeah. No, I, you know, you got to, you got to peel the onion a little bit. Uh, the inference market is expected to be extremely large and I don't want to cite any, any research reports here, but you know, pretty much everyone that we have seen is, you know, in the multiple tens of billions in a certain time frame, which is typically in the next five years, right? Um, I think from our standpoint, we are looking at it as let's let's look at the application, right? Let's look at the applications that are getting the most traction. Transformers are getting a lot of traction in the market right now. And um, what what is it that our customers want to do with those transformers, right? So we spend a lot of time talking to customers, and and I think what we are um, what we have realized, and this is what drove our chiplet strategy is they want flexibility, flexibility, flexibility. That's what we keep hearing from them. They want hardware flexibility, they want software flexibility. And um, what they really mean by that is, you know, they want the ability, uh, there's so many different computing form factors out there. They want the ability for a common hardware to kind of run across all those different, different computing form factors, right? Uh, so it could be a tiny, you know, uh, you know client compute form factor, uh, or it could be an edge data center. So this could be a micro data center, you know, servicing a small footprint of end users, or it could be a hyperscale a cloud data center, right? Um, they want, uh, you know, hardware that can scale across all those computing nodes, right? And they want that common hardware so that they can essentially build a layer of orchestration software on top of that, uh, that would allow them to seamlessly stream workloads anywhere between client compute to cloud compute. Right, um, and that is really the end vision that a lot of the big uh, hyperscale uh, data centers or even the big, you know, large computing companies are kind of marching towards is they want that ability to take, you know, people writing apps using transformers uh, and, you know, they might do a lot of their development work on a, on a client device and you know, do a lot of test on their client device. So they want, you know, some hardware capabilities in that client device, but when the app is ready and it is servicing you know, millions of users and it's better located in the cloud, that app can be seamlessly uh, streamed into the cloud um, and then can be run from there. So with our chiplet-based approach, we, we are very uniquely differentiated in that sense. We are probably amongst the very few companies that are building uh, grounds up you know, chiplet-based AI computing platform that can scale 
across all these different computing form factors, which is which is really our our you know go to market, right? Is we are talking to companies that want to kind of cover all those different form factors and build a you know a data center grade, enterprise grade software stack from the get go, not as an afterthought um, that they can then seamlessly weave across all these computing form factors. Wow, interesting, very interesting, a lot of potential. This the inference market is just going to explode, and I think we, you know, I agree with you. I think we're going to transition from inference is sort of just hidden in the data center because it's running on CPUs, because the inference work you're doing is fairly simple. Uh, and we're, as we transition to transformers, I think uh, dedicated specialized hardware is going to be required to deliver the kind of latency and energy efficiency that the uh, data centers and end users really, really demand. That's great. So any, any final thoughts here as we have a couple minutes left uh, you'd like to share with the audience? Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, obviously we are very excited, uh, you know, with, uh, you know, we, we are probably the, you know, only company that has uh, taken a digital in-memory computing approach to solving inferencing in the data center. Uh, we are probably the only company that is taking a chiplet based approach, uh, at least, uh, you know, right now I expect others to kind of come into the fold. Um, and uh, we feel uh, we are amongst the first few companies to really focus on transformers mm -hmm. uh, as a class of workloads, all right? Uh, with, uh, and with that, you know, with, with all that uniqueness that we have, we think we, so we are solving the problem very differently and it really allows uh, customers the flexibility to go across multiple different applications and computing form factors. And so, you know, by the time we get into the market in 2024, we expect, you know, the inferencing market to be much larger and much more focused and customers paying a lot of attention to that. So we are very excited to, to intercept the market in that time frame. Interesting. Well, it'll be fun to watch, that's for sure. I think the industry is going to change pretty dramatically in the next two to three years. And I think your timing, uh, while some might say, well, you're late to the market. Yeah, but the, 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 the market's evolving so quickly, you might actually be just in, just in time uh, to intercept the useful application of transformers and the requirement for efficient inference processing. So it will be very fun to watch you guys. Let's stay in touch. I would love to have you back on as you have uh, reached some milestones along your development path and uh, update my audience as to what, what your next steps will be. Thanks, Carl. Thanks for having us. Thank Thanks for having us. Thank you guys very much. We'll hope to see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay, that was great, guys. Really good. <laughs> Let me put this on.